the purpose here is uh, to roll through some stuff and help you guys become more efficient users. And I'm going to talk about Google for about 15, 20 minutes, and then John is going to talk about Google Scholar. So if you have questions, just ask. And in the box right now, if you could just type, if you're more interested in covering regular Google or Google Scholar, just type your question and your answer down in the chat box, and then we'll, we'll see what people are more interested in. And I'm going to share in the chat box my slides for today so that if I go through stuff a little too fast or you want to return to something or you have a question, you can let me know. Okay? So um, I'm now going to go to, rather than show you a bunch of slides, I'm going to be in Google. Okay? And I don't see anybody typed a message, so maybe you guys don't know about the how to use the chat. I think we only have a few participants I know. I'm going to uh, just show a few things in regular old Google and we'll focus more on Google Scholar. If So under here under settings there's search help. If you don't remember all the things that I covered today or you just want to like where do you get back to stuff, here's some of the basics. So if you have the ability on your computer right now to open up um, like a second window you can try some of this stuff with me as I go on. Okay, I'm just back to regular Google and under settings was where there's advanced search, uh, there's my history, uh, and there's search help. Google does change their algorithm a lot. So the first thing, if you, can, if you sometimes people like um, have two windows open or have a window, you know, here, if you can see the webinar and you want to test some of this, I'm going to start with just plain word order, blue and black. Okay, so you can see uh, what I'm getting there. The first thing that comes up is pictures of the band, blue and black. And then if I change the word order, black and blue, we get totally different results. So the takeaway here, and this is true in Google Scholar as well, is that word order really, really matters. Now, if you say you don't, you want black, but you do not want the words blue to appear, you put a minus sign, okay? So check how this changes the results dramatically. That minus also works in Google Scholar. So if somebody has any questions now, go ahead and ask. I'm going to show another tip of the plus sign. So this is black and it must have the word, my results must have the word blue. This works in Google Scholar as well. So you can see quite different results. If I put a space, it's Google is assuming that that plus, by the plus there, I mean the word and. And you're back to the results we got for black and blue. So those little keys about the plus and the minus, the important thing to remember is adjacency. It must be adjacent to the word that you're trying to get out of your search or into your search. Plus is, it has to be there. Minus is it doesn't. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to cover is just some of this basic stuff up here under search tools. Like say I, um, I'm going to go over so that you don't have to watch me painfully uh, type because I have bad typing in front of people powers. Rheumatoid arthritis. That's some, something that people would Google all the time. So you heard a news, you were driving into work today, heard it on the news that there's some new study about rheumatoid arthritis. So they're like, oh, I'm going to use the news tab and that'll significantly 
change your results. And then, or e Ebola might be a better uh, example today. But under search tools, another thing you can do, they're generally sorted by relevance, but say that you heard it within the past hour. You heard this news within the past hour. That's, that really knocked down our searches quite a bit. And the next the nice thing about it is if you are if you suffer from RA, you could create an alert and say, I'm I want to get a email alerts when studies come up about rheumatoid arthritis. Okay? So that's um I think I've run through at least um, three or four tips. We did word order plus minus, uh, and using at least one of the search tools. The next thing I'm going to um, show is images. Uh, and I've got uh, too many restrictions going on here, so I only have one image. So I'm going to take out, uh, I'm just going to go back to regular vanilla Google, and I'll type in, uh, let me see actually, if I, I'll do African hair braiding. That's much more interesting. African hair braiding. Okay, so I just want images. We all use images from the web quite a bit. But under images, there's also more search tools. And this is true, true for almost everything that you see up here. There's more search tools. So one of the things would be that I just want, for the presentation I'm doing, I just want pictures that are mostly yellow you know, that have yellow highlights for whatever reason, or, or girls that have had African hair braiding that's dyed uh, blonde. And um, then once again, being educators, you probably want to use labeled for reuse, and it really limits your results quite a bit. Like, there we go. There's probably an image that, that would work if you wanted to talk about African hair braiding for blondes. Um, so it, just to show you, you know, usually with Google we get too much, and this is kind of almost to ha how to get too little. And if in using this, I know that I'm um, lecturing to the converted, but we want our students to always cite their sources so if you put a site, if you put use an image, for goodness sakes, model good behavior and put the source uh, that you got your um, image from. Okay, before I keep babbling on, are there any questions or anything? Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, this, a link to this about how Google actually works is in my slides. Some people don't understand that Google is not searching the web, it's indexing the web, which is, um, you guys are educators, you probably understand what an index is. Some students don't know that like at the back of the book, that thing, Google returns results based on its last crawl. It's easy to exclude stuff from Google searches, very easy. Anybody who's ever run a website knows how. So Google does not have everything. If you, once again, if you are an educator or you want to build your own skills, uh, this, this is in that, that link I sent out. Um, but there's about searching the right terms. This is going to talk about stuff like that word order and also the Google automatically looks for synonyms, but it's going to talk about being able to use things like the asterisks for proximity searching, understanding why you got back what you got back. Um, this is important for scientists, searching for evidence for research tasks. And if you're, you know, all, all of our students use Google, I mean, we all use Google. So um, if you don't really understand uh, or want to be able to explain it to somebody else, there's lesson plans for it. And evaluating 
the, our favorite, um, anybody who's ever read a college paper with lots of web sources gets a little frustrated with people using um, very uh, dubious websites. If you want to invest about 45 minutes, um, there's a power searching with Google. And uh, it's kind of this guy talking in the camera, but I learned a bunch doing it, and you get a certificate at the end, and woohoo! Um, inside Google is if you want to understand, like they, they don't tell you what, if you knew what this algorithm was, you could sell it for a lot of money. They don't tell you exactly what it is, but they explain a little bit about, and they have stuff like their playground and how crawling and indexing works. This is that simple thing that the, the first thing I showed you at the bottom, the about um, Google, it's the doing stuff like putting things in quotes to look for, imagine all the people, it's going to find them in exactly that word order. This is that simple minus, looking for site things within a site, like you can look for things within Appalachian State University if you're looking for collaborators, et cetera. Who's linking to a site? This is the asterisk. Uh, this would look for, for a phrase like, what is that saying again? And it'll find a penny saved is a penny earned. The asterisk is super powerful in Google. It's a proximity wildcard searcher. Um, so I won't read everything there. The one thing that uh, I will mention is punctuation doesn't work. So if you're putting question marks or commas in your search, it does no good. But And also, after 10 words, Google stops looking at your search. So when you search Google, think about the, put your most important words first and leave out, like, um, I'm just going to go back to Google for just a second. I see a lot of students dump in the why marijuana should be, oh, oh why married, married men cheat on older women. Okay, that's not a, a particularly sophisticated search. And as you can see, we're getting crappy Yahoo answers is not great. <laughs> um, so uh, there would be a much better way to search this leaving out words that, are, that Google ignores, like why, or putting commas in here, uh, question marks in here, meaningless, okay? Okay. Um, hi, I'm John Wiswell. Um, I'm going to talk about Google Scholar. If you want to, um, if you'd like to talk more about this and made it more detailed, I'd be glad to talk to you, uh, with you later. And, um, um, of course, we can go a long time if you want here. So here's what I'm going to cover, uh, and I'm mostly going to focus on the tips at the end of this outline. Uh, but let me just say, uh, you can look this over if you want, but I want to just talk about how I use Google Scholar. And one of the main ways I use Google Scholar is just to find full text of an article that I haven't already got. Uh, if I have a citation or a dead link somewhere, it's really easy to go to Google Scholar, and, and it links to full text pretty well. Um, again, I use Google Scholar to find the full text. A second thing I do uh, is if I have an article I've already identified as being useful, I like to see who cited it. And Google Scholar is really good for that. And we'll look at that in a, a few minutes. Finally, I just use it like a regular database uh, if I have a topic and I want to just see, uh, I want to find articles and other things. Uh, it works. And um, I usually think it's a bad idea to just use one. Uh, database, um, so don't use just Google Scholar, uh, but it, it's it's very effective. And I think you know one question is: Is Google Scholar a good place to start? I think a lot of times it is. So, um, so anyway, I don't want to talk too much about what Google Scholar is. Let's kind of jump in and see how it works. Uh, but I'll be glad to talk about this stuff at greater length with you. Uh, so I'm going to go down here to the bottom. Uh, some tips for using Google Scholar better. So let me switch switch to my screen. Uh, the first tip is come to Google Scholar through the library. Um, this is really important, especially if you're off campus. Uh, we have a link here on the library webpage over on the left. 
Google Scholar. And I believe I was just at a meeting where we agreed we were going to get rid of that link right there. It was going to be gone. So we're only going to be using the Google Scholar link up here. So I'm going to go ahead and try and do that, although my habit for several years has been to use this one. And let's take a look at how it works differently from if uh, we don't use it. Uh, so anyway, let me try my search. And uh, Megan um, referred to the asterisk. I'm going to use variations on the term Appalachia, Appalachian. There might be some other ones I can't think of. And um, so here's my search. And now I'm in Google Scholar. Is that big enough for you to see? I enlarged the screen somewhat, so I hope that's pretty visible. Okay. Um, now I'm going to bring up another um, bring up another tab that has a similar search, but I just went to let me back up. I just went to scholar.google.com, and I did the same search, and the results should appear. Uh, the same, I should get the same results. I put in the same words, I put them in in the same order. So the results should be the same. But the key is if you come in through the library, you'll get more full text. Um, this is especially true if you're on campus, you're off campus. So let's just talk about these results. I've come through the library. Um, there's kind of three ways you can get to full text. And one is just if the researchers have put this up on the web, and that happens a good percentage of the time. And a lot of times you'll see something over over on the right, and the, this isn't full text, but a lot of times you'll see links over here. Another thing that happens is um, I go to public health nursing, and we have agreed with the publisher of public health nursing that, you know, that we were paying them money, and they took our IP, internet provider addresses, and they recognize this. If you're on campus, they recognize it as Appalachian State. If you've come in through the library from off campus, you'll be asked for your name and banner ID. And that's another IP address, and they'll recognize it. You can also go here. I kind of undid this on my computer. And go to settings. So again, it's the arrow over here, settings. And let's see. I need to make my screen a little smaller. And over on the left column, library links. And I'm going to search Appalachian. And Appalachian State. And check it. And I'm going to save. And now I get to find at a App State button for articles. Um, and a lot of times this will link in the cases where just this hasn't linked when uh, there are some cases where there are some cases where this works better, and also if we don't have it, this will link to our uh, print holdings and our interlibrary loan. If you want to try and get it that way, but of course we saw in this case we do seem to have the full text. Um, let's take a minute, and uh, if you haven't already, why don't you go ahead and go to settings, library links on the left and search for Appalachian State and go ahead and check that. Yeah, so also as uh, Megan was saying for Google, regular Google searches, it's sometimes helpful to use the advanced search. So let's take a look at that. A lot of times in your results, you'll see that down arrow right here, and that works. For some reason, a lot of times I don't see that down arrow. And you can also come over here to the right top and go to advanced search that way. So close it, open it. If you don't see that arrow, again, advanced search over here on the top right. Okay. Um, let's see what I can do with that. Um, several of the functions at the top are pretty useful. I don't want to go into them in, in a lot of detail, but um, I do use exact phrase or quotation marks a lot. Uh, I also, for a case like if I'm interested in Apple, the Appalachian region, I might want to, instead of using Appalachian with the asterisk, up the space there, don't I? Uh, I might want to just pick out some of the states that compose Appalachia or some of the more specific geographic areas. Another way this is useful is if I want to look at, say, just the elderly, I can put it in synonyms like elderly, older, aged, um, maybe some other ones, and it'll search for all of those. Um, 
But this is important. Um, I noticed in my uh, search earlier that uh, Sue Keith in the Anthropology Department had published in this area. And let's just say I want to just focus on Keith. So again, I put Keith on this line, return articles authored by Keith. And of course, if you learn how to do this, you can just do author colon Keith. Um, so, and then all of my results not just Keith cited in the text of the article, but also Keith is the author. Um, so let's go back. Another thing I use the advanced search for some is if I want to focus on a particular journal. Let's take out Keith. Uh, let's put in a journal, Social Science and Medicine. And I spelled it right. And let's see. And now I've only got uh, results from social science and medicine. Now that's not, um, another thing you can do is, I, I mean, I can take these words out and just search on social science and medicine for the most recent year. And it's kind of a good, easy way to browse um, through the latest. So uh, one thing that's a little interesting here is um, if you go down further, you can see the kind of the standard links to the journal from the publisher. But these at the top, uh, by the way, are, uh, it looks like one of the, uh, several of the researchers who published in social science and medicine uh, from a Polish university have put their uh, full text up on the web, or at least the citations up on the web. And it's interesting that that comes up first uh, instead of the publishers. Uh, but, uh, and sometimes that might really be helpful to be able to access full text that way if you can otherwise. So, um, again, um, you don't have to use advanced search. I don't use it much of the time, but it is good to know how to use these functions. So let me go ahead and clear those out. Um, and of course with dates, a lot of times I'll do a custom range over here or just limit to since 2013. So that's easy. So um, let me go to my outline. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about word choice. It is, I'm going to just reiterate that. Uh, let's go back to Google Scholar. And, um, you know, I did the search on Appalachian, variations on Appalachian. Um, let's bring that up again. Um, one thing to think about is if I put in Appalachian and maybe I wanted to focus on West Virginia, um, maybe that would work. But um, that's going to exclude everything that doesn't have West Virginia in it. And that could be a problem, so I might want to hold off and just uh, put less at first. Now, when you put more words in, it's going to narrow your results. If you take words out, you'll get more results. So, um, um, but anyway, so here, you know, I have the concept of the region. Uh, it's not perfect because I might find I need to list the states or more specific sites. I'm interested in health. But I'm also interested in uh, health impacts of health on, on you know, social structure and the effects of social structure on health. Now, I, as uh, Megan was showing, I could put natural language and add a lot more words, and it would probably cut out uh, at least a few things that I really want. And uh, Google is thinking about, um, um, you know, it's using the order of your words. Um, I can make a difference by. Uh, it's a pretty subtle difference, but I could move Appalachian to the end, and it will it will make some small differences in the results. Uh, let me show you another uh, search I did. Um, I've been doing. Here's another completely different uh, search. Uh, I'm kind of interested in system, systematic reviews, which are used in the health science. I'm kind of interested in you know the methodology and how it's been used. And I did this search first. I put systematic reviews methodology unpublished because I was interested in its, um, you know, how uh, how uh, researchers are finding unpublished studies. And so I had unpublished at the end, like this. And I thought, oh, well, I'm not finding. It's not very obvious the studies. Um, the focus on unpublished, so I put that at first as a more important word, and my results actually were a little better. Because, you know, you can get 32,000 results, but the ones that really matter are the ones on the first few screens where you're going to look. So, 
Um, okay. Um, let me go back uh, to my outline. Yeah, so number four is using cited by and the links to uh, um, Web of Science. So, and I use this a lot. Let's just say I'm interested in, um, well, let's go back to the other topic. It's a little friendlier, I think. Uh, I might have come across this article, this top one, Health Promoting Behaviors, Perceived Social Support, and so on, and I want to find out who cited it since it was published in 1989. Um, plug it into Google Scholar, and here's the Cited by 87. So let's click on that. And I can, 87 might be a lot to look through. Sometimes the numbers are even bigger. I can click here and search on uh, something more specific. Or uh, let me just put in, uh, say, the word support. And now, well, I didn't eliminate too many with that one because, uh, um, you know, for whatever reason, but sometimes it really helps in looking through them all. So just be aware of that little box right there. Let's go back to my original sort, uh, search. And here uh, is a link to Web of Science. This is really new just since January. Uh, and um, I don't know if I understand the business decision behind this. I don't know how long it's going to last. But right now, it's a really convenient way to get into Web of Science. And of course, Web of Science is the Science Citation Index, uh, the Social Science Citation Index, and the uh, Arts and Humanities Citation Index. I mean, they're the people who developed this concept you know, of, of cited, of following who cited articles. So anyway, here's Web of Science, and it takes us completely out of uh, Google Scholar into Web of Science. And now Google uh, Web of Science, if you ever do any searches in there, have a, a will have links to Google Scholar as well. So look for those. So I think that's pretty cool. I just don't know how long it's going to last. Um, okay. Um, my next uh, tip is uh, I really like to use Zotero. Uh, EndNote is also really good, so let me show you that. If you look at these results, you can see I already have import into EndNote. Uh, if you use EndNote, be sure to go to Settings. And um, right here, uh, it'll usually go to BibTeX if you don't change it. Set that up for EndNote, save, and then you'll get these little links in here. Uh, I also use uh, Zotero, so let me uh, show you Zotero up here on the top, up in the URL line or the web address line. There's a little envelope. I don't usually like to use that. I usually like to go to the article as much to the full text as I can. Um, and of course, there are links over here, export citation for this article, which will uh, save it into EndNote. But um, let me click on the Zotero button. It might be pretty hard to see. Um, let me just wave the cursor around up here. Well, I'm gonna. It's an icon that looks um, that's supposed to be an article. Uh, so right here, and now down down the lower right, I get a little box that's telling me it's saving this, and uh, it'll be up for a few seconds, and I'm gonna wait till it's done, and once it disappears, go to Zotero, and I have a Z because I've loaded Zotero. And I get this panel, and I can see, um, yeah, here it is, the article I just uh, grabbed. And it's got the full text, as well as a snapshot of this page that's in front of you up above. Um, so, and it's pretty good. So I can also take this, uh, right click, create bibliography from the item. Um, let's do APA 6 version. Usually I copy it to the clipboard. Um, and then I can insert it into uh, a Word document, into an email. Uh, you can also do this as you write. Um, so I don't want to go into Zotero or EndNote in great detail, but if you'd like, uh, we do workshops on that. We do one-to-one -one consultations on that. We do troubleshooting. So let us know. So I'm going to close it because you really don't want to leave Zotero up because it's in the way and it's easy to just reopen. But um, so that's another thing I, I do that's not certainly not unique to Google Scholar. But um, and let's see, one other thing, same as uh, Megan had mentioned, um, you can create alerts. Let's just say, uh, let me go back to my results. And um, down here on the left, create alert. Um, this is really easy. You see my search terms. Uh, I just put in my email address. 
and I can get um, um, I get um, new results as they come into Google Scholar sent to my my um, email. And I really do use this. I have several searches like for Appalachian State uh, and the zip code. I forget if I use the zip code, but um, and you know I get frequent emails. Um, that tell me everything that Google Scholar's found that has that term Appalachian State in it, and so I can see what's being published. And it's not just uh, and to go back to Google Scholar. It's not just articles. You know, it'll be books, it'll be theses, which are coming out in great numbers right now. The master's theses are being uh, are going online, and Google Scholar is is uh, is indexing them, and uh, other things that go in Google Scholar. So. Um, I don't use that real heavily, but I, I do use it that way, and it'd be easy for you to use on your topic, uh, maybe to keep up with it right before you submit a paper. You know, if you want to find something new that's coming out. Um, so, um, I didn't really give you all uh, much time to play with Google Scholar yourselves. Um, do you? Uh, are, and there don't seem to be any questions, but let me uh, just stop again. Try to stop myself again. Are there any questions? Okay, well, um, let me just go back. I just want to um, talk for a minute um, about what Google Scholar is. Um, and as you can see on my outline, I'm really just going to follow this outline. Uh, but, you know, Google Scholar is a subset of Google Web, regular right, Google Web search. Um, and um, not everything is, in, as Megan said, not everything is in the Google Web. I mean, Google Web Search won't find everything. Uh, most of the scholarly journals and scholarly associations like Google Scholar crawl their websites. Uh, one thing that's cool is that Google, Google Scholar can go really deeply into the article's full text. So a lot of times when you're searching something like Web Science or PubMed, you're just searching the abstracts and the uh, subject headings, which is really good. But sometimes, uh, it really helps to be able to search the whole text of the article. Um, one thing I should ca caution you about is Google Scholar will crawl journals and, and academic societies and universities, but you know I can put garbage about something I don't know anything about on the Appalachian State website, and Google Scholar might find it and rank it highly, so that somebody would find it. So just this is a problem. Um, um, not everything's peer reviewed. Uh, we have other databases for which that's true uh, also, so I mean, I don't think that's a showstopper. Um, one of the things, of course, things Google Scholar does, just like Google like Web, is it finds massive, massive numbers of results, so you really depend on relevance. And um, 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 so, so um, um, and the way it's ranked is by the search, by search terms, terms, of course, as we looked at, but also by the prestige of the, of the journal or the site. And, how often the article is cited. Um, so let's see. Um, so I have a question about Zotero. Um, Zotero is like EndNote. It's a uh, citation management software. And um, it is a website, Zotero.org. So if you want to just go to Zotero.org, um, that's an easy way to find out. But we also, uh, if you search the library webpage or the university, uh, website on Zotero. It'll bring up our guides to uh, using Zotero. But also if you go back to the workshops, you can see um, that we do workshops on citation management. And Bessie Williams has a real nice one on um, uh, using Zotero that you could just go to, you know, in a few minutes and uh, she'll explain it to you. But um, yeah, it's software. The kind I use, I load on Firefox. You can also use it with Chrome. And Safari, uh, and it'll grab citations like that and allow you to reuse them. Uh, uh, once again, let me just show another one. Um, well, let me go ahead and bring up Zotero.org. And so, and it's easy to see the download now button, but uh, the sort pages are really good here. So let's so. Uh, think about using it that way. Again, um, um, if I go to the, the library webpage and search on Zotero, 
uh, it's not hard to find the guides uh, to Zotero and EndNote also. So um, let's see. Does that uh, answer some of the questions about Zotero? Okay, and I see Kelly's posted a link to Betsy's presentation. Uh, but again, uh, I'm happy to work with people one-on-one -on -one getting uh, getting Zotero set up. Uh, it seems like a lot of times I'm asked to um, to with, to troubleshoot EndNote problems. So uh, you can think of me if, if something like that comes up too. So let's see. Um, let me just go back to my outline. A couple more things I like to say is. You know, Google Scholar is really good. It works really well. It's easy to use. It's easy to use for your students. Um, it's free. Um, let me talk about the minus side, and that's that Google, you know, has a record of uh, of uh, shutting services down that people like. Uh, they change things all the time. That's not just Google, though, of course, because a lot of our databases, you'll see changes happen, and it's like, why'd they do that? Uh, privacy is always a concern when you're dealing with uh, Google, I don't log in, but I assume Google knows what I'm looking at and looking for patterns in it. Um, occasionally, when I'm using regular Google, I change to a different browser that I don't use very often and do my searches there. Uh, again, one other minus is there's some kind of junky stuff in, um, in Google Scholar. Um, not everything is scholarly. So you don't want to sell it that way. One of the reasons I'm interested in Google talking about Google Scholar is because it, uh, one thing I've been seeing is, is uh, our, our peer-reviewed articles from different uh, uh, disciplines discussing you know how Google Scholar fits into uh, that discipline. And uh, somebody was actually uh, made the argument uh, recently in health sciences that you could use Google Scholar to find everything and uh, of course, it was a counterattack. Um, I, I don't think that's true, but you can find a lot with Google Scholar, and it really is good. So um, I don't have any problem with using it. <laughs> uh, just don't use only Google Scholar. Okay, well, that's uh, everything I wanted to say. Um, if, you, if you have any questions, I'm going to stay here a couple more minutes, but uh, get in touch with me later.